Our work to understand interactions between pests, diseases, environments and humans is led by a group of world-leading scientists who will address these issues. In September 2016, we brought together the project team and others involved in management of trees in Epping Forest. In this video, we reflect on how people involved in developing strategies for management can be put in conversation with oak trees. I think we've set ourselves a very tricky task in trying to work with non-humans and I think that's something that we certainly need to do some more work on in trying to find ways of working with non-humans as well as trying to consider what sort of role those non-humans might have in a keto decline. I think previously it's there's been a big focus on the human aspects of tree health in particular, kind of management um, and adaptation and ideas of resilience, but actually that we need to include the non-human communities within that work. And so we've been able to draw on um, existing social science, arts and humanities research um, to really sort of extend that across these two days where we've been on site um, in Epping Forest, meeting their head of conservation, their biodiversity officer I'm um, hearing about some of their tree management problems but actually spending time with trees um, and watching scientists running up to a tree um, to find you know an agrillus beetle hole or um, they see a bleeding lesion on an oak tree for example is it's fascinating for us as social scientists becoming interdisciplinary scholars basically and then them understanding you know some of the questions that we want to ask as well so I think it's been great from that idea of yeah working yeah. in the borderlands of our disciplines yeah. I, th I think we've we've had a real insight into the way that the kind of questions that we want to ask about the the role of non-humans in acute decline and the role of borderlands meshes really well with some of the more kind of hard science work packages who are trying to think about the context for acute decline and what's actually happening around a tree which is showing symptoms it's been really quite exciting uh, to build on each other's uh, knowledge and, and insights um, uh, in the conversations we've had uh, to yesterday and today as well and uh, previously already in the project but the participatory exercises kind of brought it even more uh, to the front um, to explore each other's language a little bit and, and also being able to ask uh, what we call you know silly questions. And one thing that we've spoken quite a bit about has been time and temporality and the importance of understanding the cultural history of trees um, and the stories and lives that they might be embedded in um, and where that's going next. And, and yesterday with the, the woodworker coming also to talk, to talk a little bit about uh, wood turning and, and the bowls he had produced out, out of different woods. But it was uh, it's very nice and, and to see that connectedness, I guess, between the human, the non-human, but also the kind of the, the, the science knowledge interface with the experiential knowledge interface um, and, and, and see the enrichment of bringing those two kind of knowledges, if you'd like, uh, to the table. I thought it was very special. Mm -hmm. One thing that I was kind of worried about, but only because... You, you can't, these are the sorts of things you might worry about as an organiser, is where people going to talk to each other, where they're going to be open and generous enough to do this kind of thing, suspend their sort of, I don't know, scientist, mode. scientist mode, yeah, and, and kind of become tree enthusiasts for a couple of days. And it's been an overwhelming experience. People have been 100% into it. We've even, um, you know, created plays um people have asked silly questions it's it's just been, and been fantastic willing to get, go out at 10 past six in the morning out into the woods and to listen to what's happening yeah. as dawn comes yeah one of the highlights for me actually was this morning where i, I guess the group had become so comfortable with each other uh, that we were when we asked them to basically present a, a particular methodology of uh, that they were going to be using in their work um, <laughs> in, in let's say literally a snapshot and, and we just gave them pretty much you know uh, five minutes to prepare and sort of stand up in front of the group and and, and present that in a, in a quite an interactive way that, that people were happy to do that comfortable to do that it, uh, but also it was just so really interesting to hear about those different methods that we will be employing or have already been employing within the project. I'm just excited to see those results kind of also merge uh, within the analysis phase of, of the purpose project. Um, 
And and I think yeah, this this workshop grounded us in terms of taking that forwards uh, really uh, in, a, in, a, in a collaborative way. So within our purpose project and within the proposal itself, um, and actually with, I think within the call documents for this grant, um, it was about a change of business as usual basically that we need to find new ways of working and so for us it's sort of about the non-human this idea of working in borderlands um, but actually the last two days show to me and prove to me that we are it is no longer business as usual yeah. we are doing things very differently um, and to spend time with trees I think has been fundamental to that. Yeah I think it, it brings you back to what this is all about to actually be with the trees to to reaffirm for ourselves what it is that's important for us about trees and why we should be addressing this issue.